My name is Tony Gattis. I'm a clinical scientist with Philips Ultrasound, and I'm pleased to be speaking with uh, Dr. Chris Moore. Chris is with the Yale School of Medicine in New Haven, Connecticut. He's Associate Professor of Emergency Medicine. He's Chief Section of Emergency Ultrasound and Director of Emergency Ultrasound Fellowship. Good morning, Chris. Hey, Tony. How are you doing? Doing great, thank you very much. I appreciate you taking the time to speak with us. Can we just start by, could you just describe for us how you use ultrasound uh, for lung in your practice? Uh, sure. Uh, one of the great things about lung ultrasound is that I've, I've seen it evolve over my career. You know, I came to Yale in 2002, and at the time we weren't doing a lot of lung ultrasound. But as evidence and utility emerged for things like pneumothorax, as well as fluid on the lungs, we started using it more. And then COVID came out, and we you know, have seen that that actually can be a real application for lung ultrasound. I would say, in general, you know, I use it for anyone who's short of breath. So if they come in, I'm looking to see if this is a, a cardiac cause or a lung cause, specifically looking for B-lines, although there are other things, like I mentioned, pneumothorax, pleural effusions, consolidation that, that fall under lung ultrasound. But uh, I incorporate it very broadly into patients that come in with undifferentiated dyspnea or shortness of breath. Excellent. And, and how have you seen it sort of specifically change during this pandemic? I think there's, you know, variable uh, usage of ultrasound during the pandemic. There are some limitations that people have, have come up against just in terms of infection control and things like that. But I think it's actually uh, super useful. I have incorporated into, you know, pretty much evaluation of any patient that I think may have COVID or does have COVID. There's diagnostic utility and then I think therapeutic utility. Diagnostically, my experience is that people who come in that are symptomatic and do have COVID will inevitably have findings on lung ultrasound, specifically B lines and pleural irregularities, uh, often in the anterior fields, but also in the posterior fields. So I can do point of care ultrasound well before I can get a COVID test back. So if co someone comes in, we suspect COVID, I can get a sense if that's what I think I'm really dealing with here. Uh, then either, you know, once I'm pretty sure they have COVID or, or I know it from a previous test, if someone's short of breath, one of the things to, to incorporate it into is using the lung ultrasound with cardiac ultrasound and hydration status. Uh, the other thing that can obviously show up as B lines is something like congestive heart failure. Um, and that can actually occur with COVID. We've seen myocarditis and cardiac dysfunction from COVID. So if you see B lines and you have a depressed cardiac left ventricular function along with a dilated IVC, you know you don't want to flood them with fluids. Whereas if you've got B lines and very good cardiac function, a flat IVC, that's more consistent with COVID and you might be more liberal with fluids. So I'm using it for both diagnostic and treatment purposes. Awesome. Thank you. And so when you think about doing some of these scans, can you talk about some of the pain points that you experience in, in completing and recording a comprehensive lung ultrasound exam? Sure. And it, I think one of the biggest things is determining, you know, how many lung fields you want to look at or need to look at. There was an international consensus statement on this that actually recommended uh, 14 zones, which includes two anterior, two lateral, and three posterior on each side. And that would be considered a very comprehensive lung exam. So if you're doing that, you know, each time you're getting an image, uh, you want to think about labeling it and seeing what the burden of, you know, B lines, for example, is in that particular area. So moving on from, from area to area, you want to be able to, you know, label each thing. So ideally, you wouldn't have to type that in each time. It might, you know, move automatically from one to another. You know, patient positioning, obviously, like, you know, just getting them to move and sit up, take some time and to get a posterior view. You know, I will say there are times where I don't do a complete lung ultrasound in COVID. I mean, 14 zones is a lot to do on each patient. If I get a pretty good sense that there are B lines uh, in the anterior and maybe one lateral and one posterior field, then I, I may not uh, include all lung zones. Uh, but if you really want to be comprehensive, that's the way to do it. And the pain points would be, you know, getting the labeling, obtaining the image, recording it appropriately, and, and patient positioning, I would say. Uh, great, great. And I was going to ask you about how we can improve on it, but you've already, you've already answered that nicely in your, in your description. So in addition to checking people when they're first admitted or, or when they first present in the, in the ED, do you guys then in your hospital system, do you follow patients longitudinally in, in terms of how their lung progression is, is going and, and how does that work? 
Yeah, well, you know, as you know, we're seeing them typically at one point in time in the emergency department, and especially with the COVID patients, if we have capacity in the hospital, we don't want them to sit down in the emergency department for a long time and potentially expose other people. So generally, we're not doing, you know, longitudinal scans in the emergency department. Um, we do have the, the ability to record and communicate our images with other specialists in the hospital. And again, it's going to be variable how much people are using it on the floors or in the intensive care unit. Uh, we certainly have some people who are enthusiastic about lung ultrasound and, um, and we'll be doing that, but I, I can't speak to everyone in the ICU. You know, actually, we do have a, a, a project proposal, a, a grant in progress funded by BARDA, the Biomedical Advanced Research Defense Agency, to look at uh, lung ultrasound longitudinally in patients with COVID. So I think there's going to be more evidence on that, both you know, diagnostically, prognostically, and therapeutically uh, for the use of lung ultrasound. And I think that, uh, you know, my anticipation is that's only going to increase as we start to see the second wave come in and people get more of a handle on how to, you know, deal with this uh, disease. Awesome. Uh, one more question. In, you know, I know that in your institution, there's a, there's a lot of lung ultrasound going on because, you have a, you know, a great staff and you do a lot of education on this. But more broadly across the globe, are there things that we could be doing to make it easier and drive more adoption of lung ultrasound? Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely out there. I mean, there's been a lot of international conferences on this. There was certainly the uh, Spanish physician who contracted COVID himself and was scanning himself at home, um, you know, and the Italians are, are, are big on this. So it's, it's certainly, I think a lot of it is the information getting out there and people, you know, seeing how it can be useful because there's sort of the, the ultrasound enthusiasts who've been doing ultrasound for other things all along and incorporate this into their practice. And then there are people who may need to be convinced a little bit about how it can impact you know, their care of patients. And I, that just takes some time to diffuse, but certainly making it more accessible, easier to do, and automating interpretation some. You know, people who are less familiar with how to grade or you know, say whether B lines are present or what amount they're, you know, the, the the burden of beelines is something that I think the you know automated interpretation could really help with, especially for people who are you know less familiar with doing ultrasound on a regular basis. I really want to thank you for your insights on, on lung ultrasound and clinical practice and some of the things that you've experienced during the pandemic, as well as the sort of more broad understanding of lung that you have. And I really appreciate you taking the time today to speak with us and give us a hand. Thank you. Yeah, it's my pleasure. I mean, you know, the Chinese curse is may you live in. Uh, interesting times, and I think these are them. Uh, <laughs> there's also crisis and opportunity, and I, I think we're really actually seeing ultrasound come into its own in this, in this pandemic, and I think it's only going to be more important going forward, particularly lung ultrasound. Thank you. This spring, as the pandemic began to spread, we started to hear a lot more about lung ultrasound globally as well as, as locally. We listened to our, some of our physicians that we work with closely to hear the pain points that they had associated with lung ultrasound. We've worked to try to alleviate some of those pain points, and we wanted to develop a technique and some, some protocols to help really advance the use of lung ultrasound globally. So with this increased global awareness of lung ultrasound, we saw a really great opportunity to seize the moment, work on an application, release that to the public, and help people do lung ultrasound more easily. The, the, the key enabler that we're looking to do is make it easier to acquire a comprehensive lung ultrasound, as well as interpret those lung ultrasound images. And by making this more simple, we hope that we can drive adoption and get people doing more lung ultrasound. So in response to this, we had the ability to very rapidly spin up a large quantity of people in our research and development, our Phillips research, as well as regulatory and all of the related departments to be able to really quickly prototype, develop, implement, and, and we're going to re release a, an advanced lung ultrasound imaging capability on our Lumify handheld ultrasound device. We're seeing great adoption of the Lumify device during this pandemic. It offers a lot of opportunity because it's easy to disinfect, it's easy to, to bag up and use. The mobility of it is very handy so that you can more easily go to patients where they are. The other thing about Lumify is we have the ability to launch the software wirelessly with a no-touch model that just shows up by magic on your device, just like any other app. And that allows us to, to very rapidly deploy uh, an ultrasound feature like this. So this is a feature that will help in 
scanning the loan comprehensively. It will help with image interpretation and automatically count the number of B lines. So this, this image feature focuses on the B line detection of loan loan for sale. Then when you've done the full comprehensive loan, as much as of the loans you want to scan, you can see a visual summary of the results that makes it really easy to see the extent of the involvement of the loan, as well as if you are doing longitudinal studies by seeing this summary over time, you can see the progression of the loan ultrasound. The new B-Line application for Lumify will be available on the linear array and the cardiac phased array. It's available when you select the loan preset application. We have a nice optimization to enhance loan features. So when you choose the loan, preset on the linear or the phased array. You can create a patient. And now you'll see in the lower portion, there's a new feature called B lines that's available. When you're in long, if you press B lines, the first thing that you need to do is choose the region of the long that you're going to start with. So let's just say we choose region one to start you'll see now that the image has been automatically annotated with R1. So we've eliminated the need for you to have to go in and, and type these regions in. It allows you to more quickly and easily keep track of the regions that you're scanning. Then once you're in that region, you can scan and, and save a loop. Once you save a loop or you can save multiple loops for each region, you can either move ahead automatically or you can go back to the summary and say, okay, I want to scan the next region. Notice that region one has been scanned and there's a little summary there that says there were no B lines found in that first region. So let's say we scan region two, but now moving forward, let's do the auto advance. So then each time we scan, we save a limp image loop for a region, it's going to automatically increment that annotation so that you can move through the long more quickly. So we'll go R1, R2, R3, and so forth. This saves you the having to press keys and it should help really make it a lot faster to get the comprehensive lung scan or as comprehensive as you want. The, this does not force you to scan every region, just the regions that you can get to. So now I'll show you the auto advanced capability. There we can see a lung. And now I'm gonna save a loop. And you'll see as soon as I save a loop, now it's gone to region three. So I'll save another loop, scan over in region three. Region four. And so forth. At any time, you can go back to the summary. You can see the region. And if you've scanned a region, so let's go and review region one. If you were looking at the image loop for region one, or let's say region two, and you didn't agree with the results, you can go in and you can edit in the lower right-hand corner. You can override the number and say, but I'll, actually, I, I'm seeing two B lines in that, in that um, image loop. And you can override the algorithm if you want to. And then when you go back to the summary, you'll see now it's incremented to one to two B lines in region two. So when you do this long ultrasound scan, you can scan as many of these regions as you wish. But the really nice thing is that this gives you a very nice graphical overview of the regions that you've scanned, and it allows you to sort of see the extent of involvement, whether it's bilateral or where it, it tends to be anterior or posterior. We think that this is a really nice way to visualize the extent of, of the involvement in the lung, regardless of what the disease state is. The other thing that you can do when you're reviewing the B lines that you've saved, you can toggle off the the feature. If you want to just look at the image yourself and not have the overlay of the B lines that, that automatically happens when this is active, you can turn that off. And that can be helpful in the review. But we think the ability for the physician to override, should they say, you know, they don't, if, if there's an error in the, in, the, in the scan somehow, we think that's a really nice capability. So then if we go back to the summary, let's go to region three. Even though there aren't B lines here, let's just say that there's a pile of B lines. And now let's go back to the summary, and you'll see that we've now we've now shown this as having three plus B lines. So the we've binned it to be zero, one to two, and three plus in each of the regions. And again, you can scan as many loops in any region as you want. But if you're in the auto annotate, auto move forward, auto advance 
just save a loop and it'll go to the next region, go to the next region. So with this feature, we think we've eliminated a number of uh, barriers for doing long ultrasound. We've made it easier to annotate and make sure that you've saved the long regions and recorded where they were so that you can visualize them later. We've eliminated the need to manually go through and find the maximum number of beelines in any particular frame in that image loop. And we've made it visually easy to summarize the results of that long ultrasound scan. I want to thank you all for taking the time to, to learn more about this feature that we're going to roll out on the Lumify device. As soon as it's available, you'll be able to download it and start using it immediately. I'm really excited to have been part of this development and to help with the rollout of this capability. And I'm, I'm really excited that we're, we're going to help facilitate more long ultrasound and drive more adoption. Thank you very much.